So today, I wanna to talk to you about the hip motion and how the hips work and using momentum, okay, to help the hips to work and to stop any extensions, give you more power, better control, better plane, better path, everything. The right hip and the left hip are really key to solving this. So come on, let's go do it. So it's really important that we understand um, mass, okay, and what the role of the hips have in re relationship to that. So when I swing a golf club, okay, I create momentum around my body, all right? So momentum, it's like the mass of the club around my body. And what we're trying to create with the golf swing is a, is a circular motion, okay? We want, the golf swing is, is three circles that we see. We see the, the club head creates a circle, okay? My hands and arms create a circle and my body creates a circular sort of motion. It looks circular, my shoulders turn and they, they create a rounded motion. And what we try to do in the golf swing is match those up, okay? Uh, if your shoulders go too quick, then the, the club, the mass gets left behind or the momentum gets left behind or, you know, vice versa. It just doesn't match up. But it's really important that you understand the, the role of the hips, okay? And, and the, how we work the hips. Now, one of the things that you can try and do is um, have um, a friend of yours or have your wife or your partner um, grab the club head for you, all right? And play a game of tug of war, tug of war, all right? So in tug of war, if I had a rope, okay, and somebody was pulling on that rope, I would push back away from that pull. So if something's pulling that way, I'm gonna try and pull this way. So I'm working away from the, the, the object that's pulling me around, all right? Uh, or the object that's being pulled, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna push my body back away from that. I'm gonna put everything back this way to offset that mass, all right? Or in the golf swing, momentum, all right? And it's really important you understand that because when the golf club is swinging around me, I'm trying to push away from that, that mass or that momentum, all right? And that's really important. That's why we talk about right hip back, left hip back. And if I time it correctly, okay, I can, and I time the, the push back correctly, I can create incredible club head speed without minimum effort. It's all about efficiency of movement. And that's really important that you understand that. So it's not so much about the technique, it's a feeling. Okay, it's a, it's a feeling that I try to create. So if I was a, a hammer thrower, for example, well, I've, got the, I've probably got the build of a hammer thrower at the moment. I'm trying to lose it, don't worry. Um, but if I was a hammer thrower, I would offset momentum. So as that goes away from me, my hips would go forward in order for that, when it comes round, I'd, I'd spin, I'd push away, I'd use the ground and I'd feel it in my feet, right? I'd feel pressure put in my heels to, to bring that around me, all right? And I'm controlling the momentum, all right? Because if momentum is a straight line force, if I was to swing this down and just swing that down, it wants to go straight, all right? The momentum wants to go in a straight line. And what I'm trying to do with my body consistently is offset that momentum. Now, the tug of war game that you can do, and I was going back to that, if somebody holding the club head, if they were to hold the club head and you take your golf stance and you were pulling away from that and somebody's pulling you this way, okay, your arms are being pulled this way, you're gonna dig your pressure into your heels. And if they start to pull this way around here, you're constantly pushing away from momentum, okay? And what this does, when I'm pushing away this, this sort of manner, keeps me centralized so it keeps my circle in the center all right so my hips are actually moving in a, in a central position rather than me going with it okay and which is what we see a lot of golfers especially with the early release factor they they tend to go up with it because they don't fight the momentum and push away from it all right so it's really important and the, the, honestly have somebody grab your club head get them to pull away from you all right and you'll feel how the hips and then get them to move around you to about here and then move through here, you'll feel yourself pushing away consistently. I'll try and do a video on that separately at another point, all right? So it's really important that you understand that we're pushing away and that's the role of the hips. So what we tend to see golfers do is they tend to fire the right hip up and they're, they're not pushing away from momentum. 
So, and this stops the club head. And once they start firing the right hip up into the ball, I've got no room here now. My club head can't come in here. So it's got to find a route to get around it. So you end up seeing people coming over the top to try and get around their right hip. If that makes sense. Whereas if my right hip stays back and I push away, I've got all the room in the world here now. I've got no, nothing interfering with the swing. Okay. Yes, my hips do on the follow through do um, open up if you want to call it that, or I call it pushing away. Yes, they do open up, but it's because they're working in relationship. And the next video should help you understand that because this is my real aha moment um, that I had with Mike that, yeah, just all clicked into place on understanding how the hips work, the concept of how the hips work. But the, the initial concept is, is you're pushing away from momentum. All right, so remember that. Okay. So this is this was a simplistic way of showing you how the hips should work, all right? And this is a real aha moment for me because it simplified it down, and it was like, oh yeah, actually, that's exactly what it should do, all right? And what we used to do here was the whole point of this is you've got your right hip joint here and your left hip joint here, all right, or socket joint, and you've got the center of your pelvis right in the middle here, all right? And this is an important one to think of here, not these because this one we want to try and maintain that same distance away from the ball, right? What we see most golfers tend to do is an early extend where this actually moves up closer to the ball. And we've got to try and resist that. We want it to be moving away from the ball, all right? But what tended to happen was the old methodologies and the, mo the old terminology, which is still lingering around now. It's not the right task. We were told to turn the hips, all right? Now, turning the hips doesn't work as a term, right? Yes, they look like they turn, but what most people tended to do when they turned the hips was they needed to find a pivot point, all right? Now the pivot point would have been, if you're a right-handed golfer, your right hip, all right? So you would have turned around that right hip socket um, and your pelvis would turn around that point. Now what I mean by that is, you would, we were also told that you have gotta keep the right knee firm and have a stable base and, and so on and so forth, right? And what happens is, is most people would lock this right hip, turn the hips, okay, around that pivot point, which meant that the left hip moved up closer to the ball, but more importantly, so did the center of your spine, okay, or the center of your pelvis. And then we were told to then, oh, you've got to now turn your hips on the way through, right? So you, and you've got to pivot around a, a firm left side and around a pivot around your left leg. I mean, I've exaggerated the movement here because it wouldn't be as much as this, but then you would pivot around. So from your right hip, you pivot around, then you move to your left hip pivot. And then what happens is they're then spinning around off that left hip and moving up into the ball, all right? So the hips are consistently moving um, up and then up into the ball. So they're always moving up, it, you know, it's always jiggling up and you're not pushing away from the momentum of the club, all right? So what we want to see is the terminology should be right hip socket back, okay? So what you wanna try and do here is push the right hip back. Now, if I push my right hip back, okay, my left hip stays central, okay? It does come out a little bit, but more importantly, this dot here has moved further away from the ball, okay? But that's using the terminology of right hip back, all right? After this, what happens is then my, my because the pressure's built up into my right side, I'm then gonna push my pelvis to the left or move up into my left side. So now it's slightly ahead of the ball. This is gonna give me better compression on the ball, all right? And then what happens is I then want my left hip to then come back and meet my right hip, okay? Which it will do here. And this is like almost impact around about here somewhere. Notice though, this dot has got even further away. Once I've hit the ball then, then my right hip can come out and forward. But again, this dot is still further away from where it's, you know, as where it started from. I've not consistently moved up and into the ball, which we see a lot of golfers do, or we see golfers go from this position here and then they'll throw the right hip forward because it's all to do with these pivot points. They think they need to pivot around a socket and because that's what the terminology turn means. It turns around a pivot point, all right? And there isn't a pivot point. The hips are a fluid movement, okay? And you'll feel this with the pressure of your feet because this is how you feel it. This is why feet are such a big deal now and pressure points is a big deal and all these force plates and so on. Because you're pushing in the left heel to then push in and onto the, on, sorry, onto the right heel and then you're pushing into the left heel because you're always pushing everything back and forth. It's, it's a fluid movement. And doing the tug of war drill will help you to feel how the hips are pushing away constantly, all right? But the terminology is key here as well. It's not turn, it's push back, 
All right, so right hip back, left hip back. What we want to try and do once the right hip's back here is then get the left hip to push back to meet the right hip. I mean, that's got me even further away just doing that there straight away. All right, obviously you might hit the, off the toe if you do that. But that's the old terminology was people used to say turn. So turn around your right leg. I turn around my right leg, my left hip comes forward, the pelvis is moved up closer to the ball, then turn around your left leg, you know, you've got to pivot around it. Okay, well I pivot around my left leg, bosh, I've hit the ball, I've moved up into the ball. Shanks, nasty over the tops. Uh, over the top from the inside move is a classic move that you see from there. So it's really important, okay, I mean obviously that's how my hips look. <laughs> I wish, I wish they were that slim. Um, anyway, but that's, that's the key and that was the golden key to using the hips correctly, all right? Hopefully that's really clarifies it a little bit down for you. So that's how we want the hips to work. It's, it's the, they're moving back, all right? So the right hip goes back, I move up into my left side and then my left hip goes back. It's the same from this angle here. Right hip goes back, move up into my left side so it gets me in front of the ball and then I can then push my left hip back to meet the right hip. And what it is, it's a pushing motion with my knees. My legs are pushing, so my right leg can push me back to push this hip back. I can move up into my left side because I'm pushing away from the momentum of the club. And then I can then push my left hip back to meet my right hip. My right hip will come out, but my middle of my pelvis is staying away from the ball. And that's really key, that's really important. So right hip back, left hip back, all right? I'm never moving, you know, I'm pushing back. And it's, if you can combine this pushing back motion with, with momentum, then you create club head speed and get the club to swing on the right path easily, naturally, all right? Sometimes I'll stand here and I will literally practice right hip back, left hip back, okay? I don't care where the ball goes. I haven't got, a, I don't really have a, a, you know, mindset on that, but I will stand here and I'll just say to myself, right, right hip back, left hip back, okay? So right hip back, left hip back. And I feel like I'm pushing away, all right? I'm, I'm probably not but it feels that way to me. I feel like I'm literally pushing back and away. And that's really key, all right? I've got another little thing to show you, which would show you how momentum sort of works, all right? And if you can buy one of these, I just bought this off Amazon. Uh, I think it highlights really well how the hips work in the swing. Right, okay, don't laugh at me, all right? But this is, this is legit, right? So we wanna work the swing. Remember I was talking about uh, a hammer thrower? All right. Now the hammer thrower, they're always pushing away from the momentum. So this thing is like a, a sand type filled product. Yeah, it feels like sand. Um, it's a heavy, so it's quite weighty, right? It's, a, it's actually a fitness device that I saw on Amazon, okay? Now I thought, yeah, actually, if I can get this to work, I can highlight, so it's like a hula hoop, okay? So it's like a hula hoop action. So I'm, what happened is with this, is this is swinging around me, because this goes around you in a circle, right? And this creates momentum. And I've got to create the momentum by pushing away to actually create this to go around me in a circle, right? Now I've only had literally five minutes practice with it, so bear with me, all right? But it should actually highlight quite well how momentum works, all right? And I've got to build that momentum, a bit like a shot putter, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll create this. And then once they get it going, then they can actually, you know, they can create the momentum with it. So that's what, that's what we really want to try to create when you're doing this, okay? So give me a minute or two to get it started, okay? So if I push this back, I'm working my hips back. So as it comes around me here, I'm pushing back, all right? Now, the faster I push this, the more speed I can generate. And I'm feeling this, more importantly, I'm feeling it in my feet, all right? And that's really important. If I slow them down, it starts to slow down. Now, if I went with it, right? If I build up the momentum again, if I go with it, okay? It's gonna pull me away. It pulls me forward. And I'm, so with the whole purpose of this exercise thing is it's to push away from the momentum, all right? And that's really what it's for. And I just thought it was a great device. It's very noisy. Um, it's a great device to help you to feel that pushing away action. I'm not saying you have to go and buy one of these, but it cost me 23 quid, I think it was. And I thought that was quite a good thing to, to have because I can actually practice um, pushing momentum. Because I, for years I had issues because I was taught, you know, I was taught a certain system where you had to keep the right knee still and then I had to push, I had to turn. So this all stays steady. My right hip 
I was turning and I thought, yeah, I'm actually turning well, but I kept this so stabilized that my left hip had gone forward, my knee had gone forward, and my pelvis was moving up. And then I was told, right, now I've got to turn off my left hip. Well, I'm turning off my left hip, I'm, I'm bringing everything forward. So this really helps you to, it teaches you, because I can feel it as it's coming around here, it's, if I don't push away from it, it's gonna actually, I have to push away from it in order to direct the momentum of it around me. Otherwise it's just gonna pull me that way, All right? So really, really important that you, um, that you find something that's gonna help you to do that. The tug of war thing that, you, that I told you to do at the beginning, fantastic. I, I, um, my, my wife laughed at me when I asked her to do that with me, the tug of war. <laughs> she wouldn't do it today, um, but I've done it before with her and doing the tug of war, it really does make a difference. But if you need to have something that you know, nobody else is involved, also this is great. It's gonna apparently slim, slim me down as well. So it's fantastic, a little plug there. I'm not paid by these guys, by the way. I don't even know who it is, to be honest with you. It doesn't say on it. Anyway. Um, but yeah, this is a great device to help you to feel that motion of pushing away, all right? It is a bit noisy though, so maybe don't do it at, you know, with your neighbors around at five past eight at night. Anyway, hope that helps you, and I hope that gives you a clear understanding of what the roles of the hips are. So with your hip, you have an a tendency for the old fashioned, keeping it there and then moving it up and in. So we were told for many years that you've got to fire the hips, all right, to give you speed, all right? I put a video out the other week with Tiger Woods and he talked about it being the Olay swing, all right? So what he meant by that was when he was swinging down, he used to fire the hips really quick. Yes, it gave him speed, but then he lost control, all right? Um, and the fact that he had to sacrifice 10 yards of distance, I think it was, in overall, um, but he gained more control. And Yes, the hips are important, but I'm telling you how the hips are important and why they're important in a biomechanical way, all right? So they're pushing away and from a natural forces way as well. So this is where we got into a lot of problems with the hips and your hips, okay, have a tendency to push forward, okay, too early. And you're getting into that classic trap of having to turn the body round because that's what we were told to do for years. You know, well, other pros have said it, it's worked for them. I mean, if you compare yourselves, you cannot compare yourselves to these uh, store, um, tour averages because that means that doesn't exist. Okay, there is no tour. There's, tour averages is, is a combination of you know hundreds of players put together and they're just melted into one to be the perfect player. Well, none of them are hit tour average. All right. Um, so don't try to be something that you're not. Okay, there is no such thing as tour average. Right, it's feelings. So push away from the ball okay and that's what we wanted to do now the right hip back is a great way of, of feeling that and you, it delays you down but the idea is for you then is to combine this right hip back and keeping it there but then letting the left hip join the right hip okay so but by pushing it back rather than turning okay i want you to forget the word turn it's push back all right the hips don't turn they push away all right so that's really, really important. Um, also make sure though, that when you push this hip back, that you are moving up into the left side. You're pushing pressure from this heel up into this foot here, okay? I'm putting it into the middle of my foot to then be able to push it into my left heel. I'm gonna use that pressure in my left foot to then push back, all right? But what this does is it keeps my hips back away from the ball, and I've got all this space then for my hands and arms to swing through impact and it gives you natural speed and power if you use the momentum correctly, all right? So hopefully that helps you out with this. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit better. Um, for me, the cardboard cutout of the pelvis is really the one that was a real game changer for me in understanding of how the hips work. And the word turn should be eradicated from your dictionary, all right, in golf, because the hips don't turn. They look like they turn, but they don't turn, they're pushing away from momentum. And that's key, momentum is around us, it's a straight line force, and we've got to try to direct that and change that straight line into a circular motion. And the hips have a massive part involved in that. So please remember to try that. It, what are you gonna lose, all right? Um, it should eradicate any early extensions, it should get the club swinging on a better path around you, it should help you with your timing, everything out there. The key thing is, is you're gonna create effortless power, all right? Even if you was to feel like you were swinging it easier, but you were still creating the same distance, that's called efficiency. So you're putting less strain on your body, you're not 
creating this turning motion and twisting your spine and talking too much, you're actually using the club efficiently and you're using the natural forces around you to help gain that. So hopefully that helps you. Please remember to like, subscribe, and please share with your friends. And hopefully I'll see you next week.